before I elaborate uh, further. Shall we pray? Our gracious and loving Father, we bow before your presence uh, this evening under uh, this table to be taught of you, a tradition that was started by our forefathers and even by Christ himself when he sat his disciples down, you know, to just listen and learn more from uh, him. And we continue this so that you can continue learning more and more uh, from your word. We ask for your guidance uh, through everything that will happen, uh, through the singing, uh, through the teaching. We also say thank you for our minister who is with us here today. As we uh, engage through the topic of the day, we ask that, Lord, we may uh, live here more enlightened and, above all, having a reason to glorify even more as we get to understand you and understand marriage from a covenantal uh, perspective. While Ambawa Konjiani, we pray that you will guide them. Now, while Ambapi are not fought online, we ask that you also bless them as well. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Um, yes, like I was saying, we have been doing the book of Ephesians. And we are stuck in Ephesians 5 verses 3. It's not that we, we are in a hurry, kumaliza, ama tumeshindo kutoka hapo, but there is a lot for us to learn from that uh, specific portion. We looked at sexual purity last week, and of course we looked at the definition of sex. Um, that is the gender. And uh, today we'll be looking at marriage because looking at that nini na cover a lot so the covenant issue but more to get us home una story leta joto sana hapa a story ya kurashia where does christianity stand where do we stand as far as culture is concerned and, and, and all that and, and I'm happy that I remember when Bridget Wamboi opened that gear we, we really truly think about because okay, we need authorities even on this. So we continue with this. Today we are having uh, Reverend Dr. Dairo with us in the house. So uh, shortly. And then next week we'll also continue with the same, but now looking at the supremacy of scripture uh, of a culture and be having Reverend Doria uh, with us. So um, it is it is a privilege, and we don't take these sessions uh, for granted. We thought, Mtungaji, that there are so many things that are preached on this pulpit, but you don't have time to kuinua mkono tuliza. By the way, yu kitu na manisha nini? So verse by verse uh, became an ideal uh, uh, avenue for us to learn more and take as much as we can uh, from these juices, the scripture. To start, we'll do three hymns. 9, 10, and 14, is it? Here is love, and then the secret place, and revive thy work. So call them on at photo online. Uh, if you can share that document somewhere, your yeah, yeah, hymns, so that you can share that document is love as as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the prince of life are ransom, shed for us his precious blood. Who his love will not remember, who can cease to sing his praise, he can never be forgotten. Throughout heaven's internal day, on the mount of crucifixion, fountain so and deep and wide, through the flood gates of God's mercy, flowed a vast and gracious tide. Grace and love, like mighty rivers, poured in senses from above. Heaven's peace and perfect justice, kiss a gately word in love. Here is love that conquered evil, Christ the firstborn from the grave. Death has failed to be found equal to the life of him who saved. In the valley of 
glorify that nest, done his everlasting light. Perfect love in glorious radiance has repelled the hellish night. That same love beyond all measure, mocked and slain by hateful men, lives and reigns in resurrection and can never die again. Here is love for all the ages, radiant son of heaven is done, calling home his father's children, holding forth his wanted hands. Here is love as stars the heaven, countless as the stars of above. Are the soul that he has ransomed, precious daughter, treasured sons. We are called to feast forever on a love beyond our time. Glorious Father, Son, and Spirit, now with man are intertwined. The secret place. Who dwells with him? <clears throat> Who dwells within his most secret place is never far from his blessed grave. Neath his, his great shadow, shadow, all will be well. No better place now for us to dwell. The secret place of God most high, the shadow of Almighty King, the dwelling place where angels cry, is where our praise will forever ring. Fear not the terror that comes at night. No flaming arrows by morning light. His truth is always a sword and shield. Against his power, all foes must yield. The secret place of God most high. The shadow of Almighty King. The dwelling place where angels cry is where our praise will forever ring. A thousand fall now at every side. Ten thousand more may have yet to die. Yet plague and sword can never kill the soul. His angels guard us now safe and whole. The, the secret place of God most high, the shadow of a mighty king, the dwelling place where angels cry, raise that our praise will forever ring. Refuge and fortress for all who trust, no safer pasture for men of dust. Neath wings and feathers of holy Lord, no greater comfort can he afford. The secret place of God most high, the shadow of Almighty King, the dwelling place where angels cry, is where our praise will forever ring. Revive thy work. 14. Revive thy work, O Lord. Thy might see our make bare. Speak with the voice that wakes the dead and make thy people hear. Revive thy work, O Lord. While here to thee we bow, descend, descend, O oh gracious Lord, descend. O oh, come and bless us now. Revive thy work, O oh Lord. Disturb the sleep of death. Quicken the sounding embers now. By thy 
and almighty breath. Breathe by thy walk, O Lord. One year to thee we bow. Descend, descend, O gracious Lord, descend. O come and bless us now. Revive thy work, O Lord, create so task for thee, and hungry for the bread of life. O may our spirit be revived, revive thy work, O Lord. While here to thee we bow, descend, O Gracious Lord, descend, O come and bless us now. Revive thy work, O Lord, exalt thy precious name, and by the Holy Ghost our love for thee and thy flame revive, revive the walk, O Lord. While we are to thee, we bow. Descend, descend, O gracious Lord, descend. O come and bless us now. Thank you, wonderful singing. So I will, um, Cecilia, will you can you take us through Ephesians 5.3? Ephesians 5.3. But sexual immorality and all impunity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. Yes, someone may wonder, uh, where is this coming from? But um, that verse is very weighty, very, very weighty, and there is a lot to be learned. You know, um, sex outside marriage, and you know when you talk about outside marriage, you'll need to understand what marriage is. Eh? And uh, I think that is where the conversation spark. We need to understand, now, where does marriage, uh, you know, begin? Someone asked, Nikirashia, can I see barikiwa? Tunezanza life together. And I think these are some of the questions that, um, you know, pulled our leg so that we may have um, uh, an authority uh, on this. And I am so, so happy again to uh, welcome to us uh, Reverend Tairo, Reverend at Fuatapi Online, Rev. PK, and he's already given you the official welcome. So, Mimi Tunikukaribisha Hapa, so that. Uh, we continue. Karibu sana. Let me first sit properly. Sija Zoya, viti kubwa kubwa. So, good evening and praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. All of us joining online and here physically, we want to thank God for the joy of gathering on a Monday. Just yesterday, we were in God's house. Again, we are here and we want to thank God. Thank you for the invite. Um, it's always a pleasure to come and share God's word and think through it. And we want to thank God for the brain spirit in, uh, in your midst of cross-checking the scripture and we praise God. As I sat there, before we just begin it, as I sat there, I remembered um, about the year 2005, 2005, 2006, um, when I had just begun being very active in the youth and we had an interdenominational fellowship where we would meet every day, seven days a week, between seven and nine for prayer. And uh, the lessons and the foundation laid then is what has kept me going to date. 
So we thank God for all of you gathering, giving up your, uh, the opportunity to watch a movie, a series. By the way, ni Bamba Sai? Ni series gani koju? Ni Brighton? The one that is co- <laughs> the one that is causing ladies sleepless nights. <laughs> Ati? Oh, sorry, I won't ask. I won't ask. <laughs> oh, our Mokoka. Ah, these ones don't know. Sorry. Oh, frozen. Oh, the chosen. I apologize for leading you into temptation. <laughs> But you have given up your time, and we are here. We thank God for Ephesians 5, and uh, my task is to lead you one of the many aspects. And at some point, I will read Ephesians 5, um, 21 and 23, because that will answer one of the two things, and will be the basis of one of the two things. So my task here is to help you through and guide you reflect on a few issues on uh, Roratio and uh, and uh, marriage one of the things one of the two questions I will address is what is Roratio and why was it given then the second question is why marriage in discussing marriage we will look at what is marriage, the difference between marriage and wedding, why is church, what we popularly call as church wedding, why is it necessary, all these things. I hope to speak about 20 minutes and then we can have a question and answer thereafter. Amen? Amen. Good. So where we begin, Roratio. I am told it was a hot debate um, I don't know if it is because the young men were refusing to pay dowry or what, or the ladies were asking for one million. So I don't know why, but let me, let me first define Rurashio. Rurashio is practiced among all com- African communities in varying ways but for our purposes we will dwell we will use the kikuyu concept of ratio every african we have to understand that even in the scriptures all communities we could even generally say all communities in the world practice dowry but in different forms in the scriptures it is there abraham gave dowry on behalf of Isaac to Rebecca's parents. And it's generally dowry, ratio is practiced. But let's narrow down to Kikuyu culture. Kikuyu culture, you have first to understand that it is not the young man who gives dowry. It is not the young man, and you have to understand that culturally, it is not the young man that gives dowry. It is your parents, and specifically, it is your father that gives dowry on your behalf. That is why, regardless of whether you have been brought up by a single parent, when it is time to give dowry, you have to look for a man of your father's age or the equivalent, his age mates. Because culturally, dowry is given by your father to the father of the girl. That's number one we need to understand. And dowry is not given entirely out of your father's wealth. The people in your village culturally have to contribute to that because in culture, a wife does not belong to the man alone. A wife belongs to the community. Are we together? Up to that point. That's number one. Number two. What you need to understand about dowry, in ideal case, the ideal definition, is in Kikuyu we say, Kurashia Negotumadogo. That giving dowry is making friendship. 
And the Kikuyu word dogo does not simply mean friendship. Dogo is intimate friendship. Between a man and a woman, the husband and the wife, we say dogo. Is, is very intimate, is covenantal. When we talk of in Kikuyu, dogo, go to man, dogo. That kind of friendship is covenantal. And in the second part, when we are defending about covenant, you will see the elements of a covenant. So, Kurashia is about, Kurashia is about to go to Madogo. Okay? The parents of the young man go to the young lady, the maiden, they give dowry, and they haggle. Yeah? One of again, Asha, we will give this, we will not give. The idea is not the back and forth, is not a sale. The idea is friendship intimate friendship in earlier days before the father of the man young man agreed to take dowry he would send out spies they would spend send out spies spy on that family do they have a lineage of quote quote your goat alone it is everyone coming together bringing um, if you have capacity to give dowry alone you are considered proud what to Nairobi especially you are considered proud because dowry is a communal thing so what is the extent you see while it is while the, the attachment are goats ideally it should simply be a gift to the girl's parents but you have to take into account that in modern times it has been commercialized, which is the wrong thing. No wonder girls are getting married. Na kifika kwa banayake, he is treated like property. Because during the dowry negotiation, she was treated as such. Ideally, in our culture, no young man should be declined to marry a girl simply on the basis of dowry. In cases where the young man is not able to raise dowry, two things can be done. Either, you're given on loan and then you will come. Or, <laughs> or you are told. I have had cases, the young man went and he is told, I just want one goat worth one shilling and I am okay. I have blessed you. When you are wealthy and you decide to come back, praise be to God, I will still bless you. Because the important thing about dowry is making friendship. Therefore, no sane parent should commercialize the daughter's gifts. Are we together up to that point? However, you have to take into account there are some greedy parents that want to commercialize it. There are also some greedy men these days that are bringing so many complications. A lot of complications in the cultural revival. A lot of nonsense they are bringing. You have to take into consideration that. So basically, that is what dowry is about. Now, the other question I, I was told is, now after you have given dowry, Muatena Harika, Muate is is a virgin Mwate is uh, I think he's a virgin girl she goat um, Harika is the virgin, virgin he goat uh, Kikuyu Dawari after you've given Mwate na Harika then you have considered to have Rashiad and then different, different families have different practices but generally that is the way it is so question is after you have Korashiad can you now go with a girl and marry? Yes and no. Yes, you can go with the Mali and she becomes, in actual sense, she's your wife already. But yes, can you go with her and live with her as your wife? Yes, if you're not a Christian. If you are a vagabond out there in the world, you are, the deal is good as done. But if you are a Christian, then you have to move to the next, which is a Christian marriage or what we popularly call church wedding 
and I'll differentiate in a short while. So I think with that information, I, I think I've given basic information about the ratio, and then questions to fill in can be later, right? Now, question on marriage. Question on marriage. Let's first differentiate. Let's first ask. If you don't marry in church, does it mean that you're not married? Eh? If you don't do a church wedding, does it mean that you're not married? Are you married? Eh? You're married. You're married. Yes. So why is church wedding necessary? Ama lazima ukuje ututese na neti na makeki na madhuiti. So why is it necessary? Let me define. There is what we call wedding. There is what we call marriage. People often confuse the two. Wedding and marriage. The church insists on marriage. The church does not insist on wedding. Wedding ni magari mengi, viatu vinafanana, mtu hajuangi kupaka makeup the siku hiyo anapaka o makeup anashinda ameka surprised. Magmaneti. All this show off is what is a wedding. Kuingia kwa 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 church na dance wengine kuvaa nguo zinaonyeshana mkonyona huko kwa church so this is what is wedding but marriage is what the church insists eh? what did i say marriage marriage is about a covenant making the church insists on covenant making. Covenant making is what is described in Ephesians 5, 21 to 33. That same chapter you are reading. The church insists on covenant making. So you can go to Russia and do, and she's a wife, your wife culturally, even in the eyes of Kenyan law, she's your wife, he, she, he's your husband, but in the eyes of the church, you haven't completed the process. And as a Christian, you haven't completed the process. So therefore, to answer the first question, after you have rashiad and done all things cultural, can you go live with her? No. She's not yet your wife. He is not yet your husband because you have not made a covenant. Are we together? Yes. Marriage, as the scripture has said, is a covenant a lifelong commitment till death. After you die, it is irrelevant. That covenant is broken. After both or one of you is dies, it's broken. A covenant. How is marriage a covenant? If you read Ephesians 5, 21 onwards, it says, Therefore, wives, submit to your husbands as though as unto the Lord. So, the determinant of how you submit to your husband is how you submit to the Lord. And how, what is the determinant? How Christ, verse 22, also says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And he gave himself up. That's the key. Christ gave himself up for the church so that the church can be cleansed and be blameless. Look at the connection and I am, I, am, I am paraphrasing that portion. Look at the relationship. The relationship between the husband and the wife is through the Lord in the sense just as Christ submitted himself, loved the church, loved the church and he gave himself up. The question is what is the relationship between Christ and the church? Or how did Christ give himself up for the church? Or how did Christ cleanse 
the church. The, the answer is in that portion. Christ cleansed. Christ gave himself up at the cross. And what did he do at the cross? He died for the church. Shed blood. And what happened at the cross? A new covenant was ushered. So what is the relationship between Christ and the church? It is a covenantal relationship. Are we together? Up to that portion. So just as the relationship between church and Christ, so is the relationship between a man, a husband, and a wife. And how is that relationship made? Through a covenant-making process. Now, you will ask, how will I know a covenant? Or you will ask, the people who just stopped at the cultural th the thing, Rorashio, and married, are they not in covenant? Yes, they are not. Because there are five or six characteristics of a covenant. Five or six. Sometimes we join two, but I will explain them as they are. Can we all say altar? Can we all say altar? altar. The people on the online, we can't hear you say altar. <laughs> Can you say vows? Can you say seal? Can you say witnesses? Can you say guarantors? Can you say sign? Okay. Ati ati sign nini? Ushanza kujaza. She's saying the sign is this. Can you say, please, madam? She's saying the sign. Are you from Nyeri? <laughs> she's. I thought it was a tongue twister. She's saying the sign is. Kevin, Ken, say she's saying the sign. Oh. Oh, ni mukamba. Are you a yomtishi? You're from Nyeri? Where ni mtuatao? Try it, we hear. She's saying the sign. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, kuna client. <laughs> oh, I'm a volunteer. She's saying the sign. Yeah? She's saying the sign. She's saying the sign. Oh, <laughs> Charles. Oh, ni Charles. She said the sign. <laughs> <laughs> so, we are saying the characteristics or the signs or the marks of a covenant are five. How do you make a covenant? If you look at the scriptures, these five or six things are there. Let me explain. Altar. And, 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 and as people of faith, we have to know what altar is. Because Tumengiwa na kasheshe ingine, mahubiri mengine, anahubiriwa. Show me the altar in this church. We are in church. We are in the old church. Where is the altar? <laughs> Where is it? Eh? Oh. The cross is the altar. But physically? I know, I know now. Ati where? Ati huku ndiyo madhabahu. Let me tell you, three definitions. One is the cross. The cross is the ultimate altar. Number two, altar is any place you designate as a meeting point between you and God. Altar is, number three, altar is any place you offer sacrifice. That's why in the, our tradition as Presbyterians, when we buy new land, we don't dedicate here in front. We set aside the whole place. So whether you're outside or inside, where you are seated at the pew or at the front, this place is called the, the front. Yeah? And this table is called? <laughs> this is called the communion table. Communion table. Yeah? This is called the communion table where we all gather. Whether sinner or saint, we all gather at the table. So in this place, huku kuingine kuna itoa? The pews. Or what? The pews. So the pews and the front. 
Not Pews, the young man, but Pews. P-E-W. So, a altar is any place you designate as a meeting point with God is where you offer sacrifice. So, the moment you come to church, this is where we have designated as a meeting point between us and God. That is where we offer ourselves as a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. So, if you look at the Old Testament, even the New Testament, any place there was covenant making, for example, Genesis 15, God invites Abraham to renew the covenant. The first thing Abraham does is raise an altar. So the first mark of a covenant is an altar. For us, the altar is the cross or the church itself, the church compound. That's one. Two, vows. The second mark of a covenant is vows, where you pledge to do something and another person pledges to do in return. Anytime you, in the scripture, you will see God, there is a covenant making process. God would make a vow and then demand the other person to do certain things. For example, he would tell Abraham, I will make you a father of nations. And what did, does Abraham have to do? just believe that he will be a father of nation and walk in righteousness. So vows. Within the marriage setup, there are vows of de till death do us part. Number three, witnesses. Witnesses are the people who are present when you are taking those vows. The people, the minister, the best couple, your parents, the congregation, those are the witnesses. In the scriptures, for example, Joshua 24, even stones can be witnesses to a covenant. Joshua tells the people of, uh, the people of Israel, the leaders of Israel gathered in Joshua 24. We know verse 15. But if you read it downwards, Joshua tells the people, even if you break this covenant and fail to renew it, these stones are witnesses. So every covenant-making process has to have a witness. When the covenant is made, after that, the people who are witnesses become guarantors. That is why when we see you enter into a marriage, na yanze kuleta kasheshe, tunanza kuingilia. Maze nini nimbaya? Kwa nini munaleta na ju? What is happening? Why? We were witnesses. Therefore, after the covenant, we become guarantors. Number five. Number what? Are we at number what now? Five. Number five is sign. Sign. Usually, the sign for marriage, usually we have summarized to be with the ring. But also the children that come forth. But also the properties you accumulate. But also the sign of the covenant between God and Abraham was circumcision. The sign between man and a woman generally we consider to be the ring. That doesn't mean if there's no ring, then you don't have the sign. No. The children living together, same house, same car, sign. Then finally, the seal. And let me tell you, young men, this is the most, one of the most critical things. Seal. A seal in a covenant making process is the bodily fluid. Contact of bodily fluid. Any covenant in the scriptures, whether between two people or between God and a person, there had to be a bodily fluid. For example, during Abraham's time, Abraham had to slaughter and the blood flows. Our covenant at the cross, if Jesus Christ did not shed blood, that wouldn't be a covenant. So the blood becomes the seal of the covenant. In the context of marriage, you have to look at 1 Corinthians 11. Paul tells the people of Corinth, just before he instructs about Holy Communion, he tells them, anyone who sleeps with a prostitute, he becomes of the same body as that prostitute. In other words, during that exchange, during that sexual... What am I going to do so I can talk some of these things? I'm going to keep... You are not an adult. Eh? 
Because an adult has how many teeth? That it will come Are you still an adult? Anyhow, so the seal in the context of marriage is the exchange of bodily fluid. That's why even under the Kenyan law, a marriage is considered a marriage after consummation. That is contact of bodily fluid. And in this case, there was sexual activity between the two. So, seal in the context of a marriage is when there is exchange of bodily fluid. That is what seals the covenant. So, the marks of a covenant are six altar, vows, witness, guarantors, sign, and seal. What makes Christian or marriage necessary is that process of covenant making. Someone will ask, Sinienda tu kwa AG. Yeah, AG is contract. In church is covenant. Lawyers in the house will tell me, ah, but pasi. There's no difference between contract and covenant and promise. They are the same thing. Yes, for you as an advocate of the high court, but for me as a minister of word, order and sacrament, and as the scripture has taught, the difference is as heaven and hell. Very different. Besides what I've already mentioned, a contract, you enter into a contract because you don't trust the other person. But a covenant, you enter on the basis of trust. By the way, hatua jani. Kiumane, kisiumane. Till death do us part. So covenant, you enter on the basis of trust. Contrast, contract, you enter on the basis of mistrust. Contract, you can break and exist. Exit. Covenant, you cannot. Because especially of the seal. You already have become one body. You cannot. That's why if you are here, if you are here, <laughs> if you are here, and ulisha kula chakula kabla ya tuombe, ah, vuteni yeri uvenye nasema. Eh? Ikiwa ulisha kula chakula tusha kabla tujaombea, wale wote umekua generous kwao, you can remember all of them. Why? Because of the seal. You become of one body. And regardless of how many years you live, you still remember. That's why pre marito sex. It's not discouraging the scripture. It's outlawed. <laughs> because of that element of the seal. So a contract is on the basis of trust. I mean, contract is on the basis of the mistrust, covenant on the basis of trust. Contract you can exit, covenant you cannot exit. Contract you make in the presence of civil authorities, the government of the land. Covenant you make it in the presence of God. So basically those are the two things. So what makes a church wedding necessary, to use that popular term, is covenant making process. Let me address two things and then we can get into question and answer. Pasi, you are telling us that contract, co covenant, you cannot exit. Na tukileta na mutu, na mutu juu. Sasa nisitoke ni kufe. I'll tell you this. Those of us I am married, te this is my ninth year, and I divorce my wife every morning, but remarry her in the evening. <laughs> and you know why? Because humanly speaking, and because I am sinful, every day I am selfish, and I demand from her more than I give her. In the same way, she as well demands, because she is also selfish and sinful just as I am, she demands from me more than I give. More than she gives me. When you see people and marriages break, it's because we do not die to ourselves and die in the Lord. 
Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Both of them are told, submit unto the Lord. Why is submit yourself to your husbands as unto the Lord? Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. So if both of you died into the Lord and the Lord, I can tell you, when you have the temptation to go away, then before you go away, she goes to the Lord, you go to the Lord, you meet at the feet of the cross, you are brought back. So, here is the thing, the point I am making. When you see one lady called Stormy o Martin has written many books, but the one I have read is The Power of a Praying Wife. And I read it because I saw my wife read. So I wanted to know, what power has she got? So I read The Power of a Praying Wife. <laughs> so, one of the things she has said, when you see a couple fight and they cannot re be reconciled, either one of them or both of them, their hearts are hard towards God. Let me restate. When you see a couple fight to the extent of breaking up, either both of them or one of them, their hearts are hard towards God. So if both of you have a healthy relationship with God, there is a likelihood, a very like high likelihood that you will survive regardless. Let no one cheat you that marriage, actually the other day we were talking with my wife and we came to an agreement that after living together for nine years and 13 years as friends, fighting each other now is very romantic. Is one of the most is the one of the most romantic things fighting. It's not a devil. It is just a reflection of our human of our humanity. So I think with that is sufficient, and probably any gaps I have left, we can fill in. I think Paul, we can open up for questions. Sure. Yes. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much. I, I did ask guys to have questions flowing. Uh, core groups, so I think you are too captivating that uh, people <laughs> will not concentrate on their phones as well, but even as we, one, thank you so, so much for um, the marks of the covenant um, very key this is a tabernacle, at least I may allow a visory no, questions are someone did ask um now that we are Presbyterians and we are talking about weddings, is it ideal to do a garden wedding? No. Yes. You see, garden weddings are not evil. There are some things we do as Christians, not because a garden wedding is not evil, is not sin. But two things, by the way, the church has not outlawed them. But two things about garden weddings almost always they are show off. Ni watu wameenda kutesa watu waonyeshe mahali wamefika kipesa. That's number 1, number 2. You are baptized in church. You are confirmed during holy communion in church. You will be buried by the church. Wakati wa harusi when you are making a covenant with a stranger, you go out in the garden. Doesn't make sense. Why have you denied that glory? And you see, brethren, wedding, one of the beautiful things about wedding is the reflection of God and how he works. You see, especially in Ephesians, the marriage between a man and a woman, that marriage is a reflection of the relationship Christ has with the church. Halafu naenda uko kwa manyasi, now, now, to my work, you don't go to Funga Macho at Garden Weddings are not seen. Please get that. But as a matter of faith and tradition, doesn't make sense to go to the garden. You have made your vows all through. New Lise, when that marriage is a letter, she da Mutaenda Kwa Garden Kuomba, or will you come to church? <laughs> so, where you be going for help, go and start there. Yes, someone is like, what? Yeah. 
Yes, and they I, had planned for that. Yes. It's okay. You will not fail to get into so, heaven. I don't celebrate garden weddings personally. And so am I. I yeah. do not celebrate them. So yeah. uh, everything is permissible, but not everything. Mm. Anyway, you're playing that context. But uh, for me as well, no. Uh, what? I, I loved the stunning no. <laughs> now, someone asked, should I continue staying even in that marriage when I'm being abused? Uh, when the man is violent or the, the, the other party is violent or when the person is unfaithful? So maybe you can talk about um, the first one abuse and violence because unfaithfulness Christ said that you can divorce because of that but what about these other yeah let me <laughs> I would rather we deal with your separation than come bury you yeah say it again was here at online yeah what online <laughs> we would rather deal with your separation and the impact thereof than come bury you that's one two the question of abuse is very sensitive because sometimes the people who say they are being abused are actually the abusers. <laughs> yeah. But they play victim. <clears throat> Let me highlight two examples. One was in the social media concluded just last week. Yes. You guys love Pirates of Caribbean Sea. <laughs> oh, Hamujui? Uh, hey, Pirates of Caribbean Sea. Who doesn't know that? Ah, sorry. Ah, Paul, I again apologize for leading you into temptation. You guys don't watch these things. But I think it was very... Mulifuata. Yeah. Uh -huh. You see, the, the Amber Johnny yes. Depp case. Yeah. Amber had claimed in 218 that she was being abused. Mm. But when the evidence was produced in court, who was actually the abuser? She, the one the abuser. she was the abuser. So on, I, I have to, I have to, especially the ladies in the house, they always play the victim card. But in actual sense, they are the abusers. One of the things I have come to conclude, if you see a man beat a woman, either he's sick or he has been abused and he, there is no other way to, to, to exit. Ladies in the house, please watch over your mouth. Sometimes you abuse, you don't know. And a person whom you love, their words cut deep. For example, if any of you came here and told me, by the way, your hair is running away. Your hair is going to be with the Lord. <laughs> eh? <laughs> Until that what? Yeah, see? That means, I perceive your hair is going to be with the Lord. <laughs> By the way, I will laugh about it. But my wife tells me, Kai Modo, Jewelry. By the way, I will even start questioning myself and even asking, Have I written my will? She told me about the hair. You see, words told by your loved ones, they may be very violent. People you love. So, then the long and short of that I wanted to say is, is this. We would rather deal with your separation than come to bury you. Or take you to rehab or a psychiatric hospital. Please seek peace. Are we together? That's number one. Two, on the case of unfaithfulness. We are living in a world where being faithful is foolishness. But let me tell you, <laughs> do not be faithful men in the house. Do not be faithful to your fiancés and your wives because she is faithful. Because ata yeye anaweza kulisha kwa wenyewe. 
women, ladies in the house, do not be faithful to your fiancé or your husband because he's faithful to you. Be faithful only because of one thing, because of your faith in God. Think about this. Has God ever been unfaithful to you? No. That way, even if your husband or your wife is unfaithful, you will still be faithful. Not because of him, but because of the relationship we have with God. Are we, are, are, are we on the same page? That's number one. Number two. Young men in the house. I can tell you, having dealt with a few men, every man feels guilty after being unfaithful to their wife. They feel guilty about it. And they will always ask, why did I do it? I don't know about ladies, but the men who have opened up tell me, after I did that, I felt unfaithful. I felt guilty about it. I felt even bad about it. Even that night, I felt like not going home. I actually went straight into the shower, washed, to just see if that guilt would go away. What drives men to unfaithfulness? And please, young men in the house, hear me out. It may help you. The sexuality of a man is driven by their hormones. Test, test, in it, test, 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 and men in the house, um, now, there are no married men in the house except me. All of you are unmarried, and I am assuming you do not have this experience. Hamujakula chakula, bado mumengoja tuombe chakula, ndio mukule. Amen. Why are you looking at me with the side, side eye? <laughs> As if I'm saying the wrong thing. You see, a man's sexuality is driven by testosterone. So anytime it accumulates, they look for a release. Either they will engage in a very intense physical exercise and somehow it is released. Or they will engage in sex. That's why when their level of testosterone rises and they engage in sex and it is released and they know it wasn't the right thing, they feel guilty. Actually, they feel as if they have failed themselves. So any man to remain faithful, you have to learn to control your testosterone. For the ladies, anyone who shows you love, no wonder tunamdanganya tunamingisha box. Kusababu kwa ma mistari yetu ingine ya uongo, unafikiria mapenzi. Kabula haujajua ni, ni uongo tulikuwa tunakuambi usha ingia box. And then, na box, uh, by the way, <coughs> unaingia box, tunafunga, tunapafungua. Because even the married women, the ones that are unfaithful, it's because, it's not because they don't want, it's because they haven't received love, attention. Attention. Yeah, but by the way, you still look nice. And a patana na kik na konda hapa kingia kwa gari. Madi. Kai. Hiu rembo niya koyote. She's shown some love by another man. And naturally, the first day at Asema kubaf, shetanya shindo. I bind you in the devil, I bind you in the. <laughs> I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. The second That's first day. Second day, she will say, Kubafu, wachana na mimi. I am married. Third day, she will say, she will just throw an eye. Fourth day, she will say, Guy, unambia nani? Mimi. On the seventh day, like Simon Makode, she will say, Guy, unataka. <laughs> And that's the same, these ladies who are here, the guy you fell for. Na labda ata ulimulikula chakula kabla hatu jaongea. What happened? Was it, was it not because they showed you some love? Mapenzi motomoto. Yeah. <laughs> and then after that he said, wasn't me. 
So, 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 so unfaithfulness for the ladies is caused by love. They want attention. They want to be seen. They want to be owned. For the young men, testosterone. Yeah. That's why a man, as soon after the sex, hapa, amaliza na wewe, atembe, tembe, testosterone builds again. Apata muingina muingisha box. Yeah. You're saying, ay. Yeah, that's the way it is. So, for men to be faithful, you have to learn to control your testosterone. Right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> any other? <laughs> now, before you take any other question from online, do we have questions from... Okay, Kemani, someone can pass in the mic. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So, my name is Patrick Kemani. I'm born again. Uh, I wanted also to say something before I ask uh, the question on what you have uh, finished saying. I saw a post after this singer died because of the abuse in marriage, and I told you, we were maybe doing a reke lemo. Oh, is, oh, is this, it that song? This lady from Nigeria. Yeah. yeah. So a pastor had posted online Akasema, um, that there is a difference between separation mm -hmm. and divorce. Yes. And he, uh, he proposed that mm, separation would be better mm -hmm. in times of uh, when there are challenges, mm -hmm. it is better to move out, separate, and not divorce because of the basis that is given on the, uh, in the Bible about divorce. So I also thought it was good also that you clarify on that because he said separation would now make the person kwanza ajita fute and see whether whatever he has been doing is good. So he was like saying, separation would be fine if you feel you are being abused in a marriage, go fast. It's not about divorce, go fast and then you'll come back after maybe the man cools down. Now my question, I don't know whether you write somewhere or I just ask them in line, okay. because I want to ask from the point of dowry. Okay. When we were talking about dowry, we were talking about kusamehewa dowry. Okay. And whereby you can go to the family of the lady and then either the man tells you you know what, uh, this is what you had so he receives it and aseme uh, I bless you with it is it good or is it something that is supported in our culture because some of us said uh, it's not good unapewa kwa nini, you know you will clarify on that do I continue or you will answer that yeah, ask, ask I continue. So, another thing, under what instance or circumstances can a guy feel that they won't be able to pay the dowry? For example, we have, uh, I have had a case, I have listened to some stories out there. Uh, there is a guy who went out after the negotiation about the dowry went so tough on him. And you know, is it, is it good or should it come that way, or which is the best way to say, Mimi ni na yo dawari mesema, I will not be able. Okay, let me first answer three. I am good at grasping three things. So number one is, is separation and divorce. They are, that is really legal. The difference is legal. So I will not go that way because uh, I'm legally incapacitated. Uh, but to the best of my knowledge, separation is where you take some time off. You still have the relationship. You still call each other husband and wife. But each of you goes away. And you take some time off. Um, you take some time off. I was trying to remember a song that explains that. There's a song, I can't remember the, um, usually when I need to remember the song it runs away so separation is where you take some time off physically you're not present in the same location or probably you would be in the same house but using different rooms that's separation and usually when it, the pressure becomes too much people will opt to separate sometimes separation leads to reconciliation and sometimes it can lead to divorce Divorce is where you now come declare legally 
there is no union between the two of us. We are finished. Kaput. You go your way, you divide the properties, children, custody, you take this, you take that. I am under no obligation. There is no relationship with you whatsoever. Divorce. So those, that, that's the difference between the two. In the case of um, um, where there is pressure in the marriage, this is what I encourage. Um, not separation really, but take time out. Take time out. You see, pressure is not necessarily because of your wife or your husband. Sometimes pressure is external. You see, when ladies have stress in the place of work, they always bring that stress home. Sorry, it's the other way. When men have stress at the place of work, they bring it home. When ladies have stress at home, they take it to work. That's the way it is. Um, so, probably the pressure is not because of the two of you. Probably the pressure is because of other external factors. So, just take time off. Don't separate. Take time off. That's number one. The second question is on uh, unapewa. Let me tell you, there's nothing wrong. You see, dowry is gift to the parents. Gift to the parents. Of course, these days I have had bring a tank because the one who was carrying, fetching water for us in the river will no longer be fetching, so bring all that nonsense. Eh? At bring bring sufuria and muiko because the one who was cleaning the other sufuria has gone. Now we need an extra sufuria before. You see, ideally, dowry is gift exchange. And the father's, the girl's father can decide together with his with their people, with his people. We are not asking you, by the way. What, however you come, we will give you as you come. There are others who will deliberately make it difficult for you, which is the third question. To make us Listen. At what point should you take pressure? Or how much pressure should you take? I don't know. It depends with different people. I have gone to places when we were in the youth, our youth was very famous. So, kama tuna, nikijana tunampeleka kurashia, we used to send us a message before. Wambia ni youth ya kwetu, ol jorok. Wambia ni youth ya ol jorok inakuja. They knew what that meant. What that meant for us is, ukisumbua sana, tunatoka. Na tunarudi. Na arusi tafanyika. It doesn't matter. I mean, si musichana yuko hapa? Si kama wanataka kuishi wataishi pamoja tu? That's not what I'm encouraging you. Because nini, si, si, si. But how much pressure can you handle? I don't know. It depends with your elasticity. The one thing is, honor. Honor. A man's character is known in times of pressure. Please, honor the girl, honor the, her parents, even though temporarily they have brought madness. That's one. Two, the church cannot decline to celebrate your marriage if it has proven beyond reasonable doubts that it was the girl's parents that were difficult or the boy's parents that were difficult. If it has been proven that the girl's parents were extremely difficult, wamejaribu kuongeresha wakakata, ah, pasi ata celebrate. Kabisa, mara iyo iyo. Eh, without even second thought about it, if it is proven beyond reasonable doubt. Ata kovestri. Yeah. yeah. During corona, I celebrated the wedding of seven people. And because the restrictions were too harsh, after wedding, celebrating, solemnizing the marriage, nikatoa gown, nikarudi feste, nikatoa gown, nikawa MC. Na cake matron. Na tukakata cake na chai na story kaisha. Last year they were blessed with twins. Yes. 
So those things do not matter. The fourth question. Thank you. Uh, the other question <clears throat> I wanted to ask about how many witnesses are supposed to be there during the wedding? Because there are some people who say they have to do that mass wedding where there are a lot of people. Three. Three witnesses. The one solemnizing your minister and two. So a wedding of five can be done. The minister, the bride, the groom, the maid of honor, the, 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 the best man. You are done. Yeah. So the parent must not be there. Yeah? The parent must not be there. See there. You as you are. Yeah. We invite, you see, African marriage, it is not you and the girl marrying. You have to understand that aspect of African marriage. It is not you and the girl marrying. It is two families coming together, entering into an intimate relationship. That's why one of the proverbs around African marriage is Modo ahetaga garena modoniwe. Yeah? You do dangerous things with your in law. Why? Because you are in law, you have my child, I have your child, I have to protect you. Otherwise, if I don't, you are my child, we remain parentless. If you don't protect me, your child will remain parentless. Because African marriage is not simply about two people coming together. Is also the community coming together. When you're visiting Igeshagi, don't you say, my older sister is married here. And you're very proud about it. What makes you proud? Because you are part of that marriage. Wakiachana, si unakasirika. Unakasirika kwa nini na siwe umeoleka. Because African marriage is communal. So it, while, let's make it clear this way. While it is when, while the church and what is in the scripture, the wedding is five people. For purposes of our African setting, the community must also be involved. Na utamu ya arusi ya kiafrika ni chakula kuisha. If people come to your wedding and they eat and there is food left, they will say you are proud. But if they come eat and make noise, they didn't eat. That's a truly African wedding. <laughs> Your questions are finished. I had the last one now. Uh -huh. uh, I had a preaching somewhere. You had a? I had some preaching somewhere. Uh -huh. So the pastor was saying that when you have had sex, even without the wedding or now, yes, e premarital sex, uh -huh. that in heaven it is known that you have got married. <laughs> yes, I had something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because. So I don't know, uh, for the covenant which we have spoken about in the wedding or uh -huh. in the marriage to be complete, uh -huh. is it a must that we must have the, f the five uh, things, the characteristics those with that we said? Or when we have the seal, which now holds the, the, the exchange of friends and the sex, mm -hmm. it, is, it makes complete? Or how do we handle about that? You see, I, I'm looking for that text. That pastor was very close to what is biblical. Very close. I exaggerate Kidogo, like he was very close. I'm looking for that verse, 1 Corinthians 11. Um, I can't spot it outrightly, but it is there. Um, the one that says, prostitute, if you sleep with a prostitute. Oh. Eh? You know that text? See, as someone takes it, 1 Corinthians 11, you see, any, yeah? Verse? Oh, it's six. Six verse? 14. By, the, by 1 Corinthians 6, 14. By his power, God raised from the God raised the Lord from the dead and he will also Verse raise us. 16. 16. Yes. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said the two will become one flesh, but whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in the spirit. So, so the point here, he was correct. You become joined. 
because that seal. And those of you here who are, I had said it, I'm not sure if you had come in, but I said, for as many as you have slept with, you remember them. Actually, hiki kikitu kikirudi, unanzanga kuhesabu, ni nani ni naweza pata haraka. <laughs> Sorry, I'm shouting these things on on. But these is uh, the things you guys go through. It's human. So, you are un anyone you sleep with, there's that unity. Seal, there's that seal. That's why premarital sex is a no no for a Christian. Okay? Yeah. So, <laughs> he's done with these questions. Uh, do you have another question? Isaac? Moto. Moto. No, no, not really. Okay. Now, I want to ask a question. Yeah? Uh -huh. uh, now, take a chance of this man who is married to two wives. He come to know the truth. What happens? <laughs> what happens to him? Yeah. And the other thing is... Uh, some of the some of the very heartbreaking news we have ever had, even from our villages sometimes. Mm -hmm. You see a very Christian, a sober Christian, mm -hmm. uh, very well of soberly born again. Mm -hmm. And because of that inclinations to Christian, uh, maybe he feel that you know kacha is too much on him. Mm -hmm. Uh, but now after a, 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 and you know he feel like you know this culture is so bound in me and sometimes he failed to honor some of those things that now we see the effects that come from failing to honor that cultures they kind of they affect his family sometimes you realize uh, maybe a gent anaenda kurashia then we realize wazazi ata inakuwa hana furaha hata wakati the lady is going in and there is some commotion and sometimes when they get to to the family unapata ata watu tonyo unapata they are not sober or sometimes unapata the family is not uh, you know as the way we would purport a blessed family would look like so how do we go about that <laughs> let me start with the last question on dowry, you haven't taken dowry um, because you're too born again, and then your children, uh, as you put it in your case, uh, probably, again, for lack of a better word, they are born with, you know, I'm, I'm avoiding those degrading words. You see, it's very interesting that we live in a scientific world yet very superstitious. It's very interesting. You see, our forefathers didn't have the kind of science we do. So, if a child is born with a challenge, physical challenge, or a mental challenge, they will have to look for something to attribute to. So mo almost always they will say, one, dowry. They will check dowry. If dowry is okay, they will check ancestors. If, they will, if their ancestors are okay, the medicine man says the ancestors are okay, they will check unconfessed sin. They will look for it because dowry is naturally we are superstitious. Even as Christians, after even being born again, those of you, if you scratch your heart, your your palm, like that. What's that? Besha, money. Namu meokoka. You see, superstitious. You see, the, the connection between dowry and a dysfunctional family, or children with a challenge, is a way of dealing with pain that science has not been able to fix yet. So when children are born with challenges, and people don't know what, how to deal with. How do we con comfort ourselves and bring ourselves to term? We use culture and superstition. Actually, in modern days, we are calling it virewa gomi. 
Have you guys heard that? For example, they are saying, Virewa Gomi, Gomi are spirits. Gomi is the ruler of Goma. You see, proper Kikuyu, proper Kikuyu, Satan we call, in, in modern Kikuyu we call Satan Goma. But proper Kikuyu, Goma is swan spirit. So when there are many, Gomi. They are saying these days, girls, the ladies, umefika 35, hujaolewa, umejaribu biashara, ati ni kwa sababu, uko nagadhire ka gomi. You haven't, you, it is the spirits, the ancestral spirits, are preventing you to get married, because there is somewhere you owe them something. Or a, a wife is married, to a wife is married and she's promiscuous. They will say it is because Enagadirega Shosho, debt of the grandmother. And how do you pay the debt of the grandmother? Koheta money. Yeah, that's Kikuyu. Koheta money. And what is money, by the way, in Kikuyu? Yeah, type of kato, ngombe. <laughs> no way, no way, no way. Eh? What? Money. In Kikuyu, money. What is this? Eh? No. Yeah. You see, Goto is even in the inside. But this part is called. Oh, moni aoto, moni. What's this? This flappy part of the eye. Some people will call it kemone. Some people will call it moni. Moni, in Kikuyu, is any protruding flappy part of your body. Eh? It's protruding, and it's flappy. In a shake, na ezaishika hivo. So they're saying for the wives that are unfaithful is because they have gadire gashosho and how do we do it to hete money but how do we hete money is fgm <laughs> so so by by that blood, when that money is being headward, that blood is shed and is, is absorbed by the soil. It is believed you have paid the debt of your grandmother and you will not be unfaithful to your husband. That's why in some of the communities, uh, counties, Nyandaro, Moranga, Nyeri, men are taking their wives for circumcision in the hope that they will slow down. So, so, so where did that question come from? So, the question of, but science has now shown us, science has shown us that these deformities are either genetic or some kind of deficiency or some kind of accident. So they are no longer about superstition. Okay? Yeah. And I know that gospel has been propagated. That's number one. However, number two, I have seen cases of a man who received dowry and wasn't supposed to receive. He received it unscrupulously. Is that how you say that word? Alingisha ujanja. Akapeleka watu hivo. You see, dowry is a gift to parents. If you receive it and you're not supposed to receive it, then I have seen people suffer consequence. Just because, and this is not the children, the parents. If you, you see, this is something pure. We are coming to, if we given impurity, I have seen it. So if the parents received right, they are okay. But that does never, never translates to the children. No, doesn't. Yeah. Oh, the second question was? asking about uh, oh the polygamous yes and, and and maybe when you address that the last one was eh, uh, does bible support the issue of surrogate mother surrogate motherhood 
Yes. Okay, you raised two questions. Why come, how come the church insists on, uh, on monogamy? Is it biblical? Monogamy. Is it biblical? We had a hot debate here. Is it biblical? On, on, on the same. Is it? It is. So if you are polygamous, you have sinned. With what? Yeah. No, no, just before you get to that. <laughs> is it a sin if you are polygamous? Is it a sin as in the scripture? And you are, is it wrong for a Christian to be polygamous? To my view, uh -huh. no, uh -huh. of which I do not support uh, uh -huh. uh, being polygamous. Uh -huh. But for you to be able to give your best to, to, one. to one. So yours is purely economic. No, no. And romance. <laughs> no. Okay, not ile. For me to get, for, for me to give full attention to my. Uh -huh. To one. To one. But even that one is, is she being given a full attention? It's okay. Sorry, I'm interjecting. Okay. <laughs> you see, what's the biblical basis for monogamy? In actual sense, in the Bible, you have Abraham. Was he monogamous? No. No. No, Abraham wasn't. He had Haggai as a sidekick. Oh, ni sidekick ama ni side chick. Ama ni side dish. Ama ni mpango wakando. We had Jacob with two wives. Jacob, Israel, the father of nation. Solomon. We have him. We have David, the man after God's own heart. I mean, all the great men we know in the scriptures were polygamous, right? So why should the church insist? Atiiko. <laughs> Labda za huku jogorod. Oh, jogorod za jogorod. But anyway, that's a nice one. Where did that come from? <laughs> you see, we are monogamous. Not on the basis of culture, but on the basis of scripture. On the basis of Ephesians chapter 5. Christ died for the church and cleansed it to be his bride. The Christ became the groom and that's why we are told men love as Christ and give up yourself as Christ gave up. Women, the wives, become the bride just as the church is the bride to Christ. Question is, can we ever think or is there a chance that Christ will have another bride? except the church. No. God does not go back on his word. So we can be sure Christ, could, to use the word, is monogamous. He has one bride. In the same way, as Christians, we marry one wife as a testimony of the relationship between Christ and his church. That's the one and only, and the one and final and complete and authoritative basis for monogamy. We don't marry one wife because we can't handle two wives. Hey. Tukileta na huyu tunaenda kwa huyu. Ningataka kuwa na Habib kwa nyumba na Fatma. Eh? Na Wanjiro. Na nitafute muluya moja ndiyo nikiona migu spoti na kumbuka mission. But that's not the basis. The flesh tells me that. But faith, my marriage must be a reflection of the relationship between me and Christ. Or Christ and the church. So that's it. Now, to, straight to your question. A man did not know Christ, comes to Christ and he has two wives. What does he do? He has to retain the two wives, not leaving one and not choosing one for the other. 
he did not know Christ. Therefore, he was in his flesh. He was not under faith. And culturally, if his culture allows him to marry many wives, he can marry. But now he has come unto faith. He retains the two of them. A, non -believe, a believer who doesn't take care of his family, before faith, that was his family. A believer who doesn't take care of his family is worse than an unbeliever. So he can't choose either. That's A. B. But in church tradition, in our church tradition, what do we do in such case? If it is truly proved that he married even the wives themselves before they came to faith, if that is proved beyond reasonable doubt, all of them are accepted to faith, but they cannot hold certain leadership positions as may be determined by the session of that particular parish. Right? Yes. You okay? All right. Last question. Please shoot okay. it. On that, eh? eh on that. Wanaezafanya arusi. Gai mwadhani. I have had one case in the 1990s, but I haven't seen a recent case. I can't remember. I was too young, but I don't think they will do a wedding. Because a Christian marriage is monogamous. Strictly monogamous. Yeah. And you see, by the way, if you don't do a wedding, a, a church marriage, I mean, if you don't do marriage, doesn't mean you will not get into heaven. You will still get to heaven. But marriage is entered too as a testimony of the relationship Christ has with the church. Alright? Yeah. Uh, there was last question nilikuwa nimeuliza. Does Bible support surrogate mother? Oh, surrogate motherhood. Ethics. <laughs> I, I, I'm framing that context. A couple has tried having children. They haven't. For whatever reason. They either go for IVF, intro vitro fertilization, something like that, IVF, you know IVF, or surrogate motherhood. The husband, the, the seed is harvested, the wife's egg is harvested, it is implanted on another mother. In the scriptures, there is nothing for or against. So that goes to the ethical question. That goes to, um, that becomes an ethical question on the rightness or the wrongness. And I can tell you, we can never agree. We can never agree. Some people will say, yeah, it, no problem with that. It's okay. They will even find biblical equivalents. Others will say, no, it's not okay. I remember one case when we were doing ethics that was presented to us. A couple went for IVF. And when they went to the IVF, the hospital confused. And instead of taking the husband's seed, who was African, they took an Indian's seed. So wakati mutoto alizariwa, alizariwa kiwa muhindi. There was a whole debate. So, so it's, it's really an ethical question. I think it's a difficult because of the pain and the desire. You see, everyone who deliberately wants to have a child, if they don't, it becomes very painful if they don't get that. They would go to any extent. But at what cost? So I, I can't say if it is right or wrong, if it's yes or no, because there is no equivalent in the Bible. It's all about ethics. Right? Thank you. No, uh, we, we, we take a few questions online, uh, just to be fair, because my phone is also going off. <coughs> no, uh, someone feels that, um, he says that, uh, Anna Uliza, has the issue of surrogacy been well, you know, answered uh, biblically? And I think you've responded. It's yeah. a matter of ethics. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are things that uh, the scripture is not, you know, 
We call explicit, them, yeah. yeah they're no, it is not explicit. We call them the gray areas. Eh? So mm. we have to apply uh, godly uh, wisdom. Now, we have someone from USA. Oh, um, kuna watu wa maju? Kuna wasi wa mayu. Na honekana US? Yes. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Na hamuku niambia lipake makeup. <laughs> Sawa. So, um, the question is, can someone proceed to do a church wedding if the parents are against your wedding? That is question number one. Question number two. Also, after Rorashio, and having received, so I met me a Rorashio so that you know it's an African, not an yeah. Mzungu. Also, after Rorashio, and having received blessings from both parents' sides, can the two of you stay together and have kids, then later on have a church wedding? <laughs> Mark that. And yeah, let me answer those two first. Okay. Um, please restate the first one. The first one was, uh, can, can one proceed with oh, the church oh yeah. wedding? I think it was one of the questions I asked. Yes. As a person of the world, let me tell you that I bet, I, I think, not I bet, we would never agree with that person. Because that question is usually, almost always, they want me to agree with them. Because <laughs> so as a Christian after Rashio, living together is no no as a Christian, if truly you are Christian. And and this is not a question of debate, it's out of debate. If you are a Christian, marriage. That's one. Two. After Russia, can we have kids together? Then when we are at a later stage, we can do a wedding. See, it beats logic. And, and if you understand what a marriage is, you see, we are scared by the wedding and we lose the, the marriage. The covenant, we are scared by the paraphernalia, the show off, and we lose the covenant making process. You, when you are living together after ratio, you have fulfilled all the marks of a covenant except one. You even have vowed, by the way, you already have vowed. The only thing is, at the altar. And you see in our tradition, as Presbyterians, you can even come within the service. Church service, Sunday, before Mchungaji is celebrating here there, Kwanza, Tubariki Hindoa. 20 minutes you are done. Kondeni Nyumbani. So, so, I would really encourage you, if you really want to live up to your Christian standards, let us avoid shortcuts. If you are sure this is the person I am living with. How can you drive? How can you buy a car without just driving it? Nikulize. Wewe mungu kwanza alikuumba kawewe kidogo ndi wakaumba wewe real. See, he created you once and for all. If God has confidence in you and the way you are messed up na wewe ni mbaya wewe ni I almost said maneno ya kibaki. Wewe ni pure kabisa. Pure kabisa. Yet God created you once and for all final. Why can't you trust another person? So, so I would really encourage if you are of faith, don't stop at ratio. Go the full way. Right? Yes. Um, another one. No, no, uh, just before. Now, someone will say, Pasi unasema hivo, you're just being judgmental. You are not understanding. The point still remains after ratio. Usiombe, usikule chakula kabura tujaombea. Wacha mkoroko. No, um. Kuna, kuna swali hapo on that, eh? Uh-huh. Inaulizoa, kama unaolewa na msea pedi ya rusi. Atima? 
if you're getting married to by a person who does not love the wedding exactly doesn't love the wedding mm -hmm. exactly doesn't love the wedding the keyword here is wedding is not marriage and marriage is coming at the front and entering into a covenant yeah if they don't love the wedding i also agree with them i did i i I did my wedding so that I can do the Mogidi. The wedding. Yeah. The, I was looking forward to the Mogidi. But because I knew of these things, I never joked with the vows. Yeah, and I keep reminding my wife, my problem is not with you. It is with God. Then what will I tell God? If, you are, if that guy has a problem with wedding, praise God. He still loves marriage. Enter into a covenant. <laughs> uh, another question here. Uh, we will tunenda to kifunga because of time. Eh? No. If a lady desires that her parents be appreciated as a gift, no, I think nijina dauri ametua kayaeka appreciation, eh? Is that a sense of entitlement? No, the it other is question, not. It is not. It is not a sense of entitlement. It, is, okay. it becomes a sense of entitlement when you attach a price that you have to bring this much, that you have to bring 100,000. You see, a gift is something I give voluntarily. And there is no amount to it. A gift is determined by the attitudes. I once in a while I would surprise my wife with a gift and sometimes the gift that will make me make her happy is when I fix supper for her fix supper for her nipike hivi akiingia hao apate niko kitchen ninapika na tuko na watoto ni wapanga hapo na kila mtu anafanya kitu she will like ngai and we are not fixing pizza. <laughs> Nige very hapo na masukuma wiki na cabbage. Nina wekelea kwa, kwa table top na kata marambili maratatu na weka kwa chakula. She will eat smiling. Not because of the way I have cooked with recipe na nini. But the attitude. But then, uh, so gift, the determinant of the quality of the gift is not the size, it's the attitude. So it's not bad. Okay, so yeah. it just but the lady has insist. So Don't when they insist, please it's come. No longer. Is um, when you insist is no longer a gift. gift. It's an entitlement. Yeah. Ah, natakumaliza watu online and then ni pia hapa mbili we close it, eh? Okay. If a man and a woman are not virgins and they come forth and confess is the wife allowed to wear the white gown or what happens? We. <laughs> Moto. Kama you pasi ya Iceland. Eh, ati kama pasi ya Iceland. Pasi za huku ni moto. <laughs> you see, there, there's something called secondary virginity. After you have come back to faith and have decided to pursue secondary virginity. Virginity is, synon or is symbolic of purity. So you may not have the original, but you have cultivated purity thereafter. Alright? So ideally, white gown should be symbolic of that purity. But these days, it is used as the standard. I mean, it's the fa it's white gown is fashion. It's no longer about symbolism. It's fashion. So that if you came to church with a brown gown, we will think, this one is her first girl boyfriend is Satan. This is the physical one. But Brethren, 
let's get this. The gown is symbolic of purity. You may have cultivated secondary purity. And that even in the eyes of God is purity enough. Are we together? Am I making sense? Is purity enough? So if they have confessed to each other and worked on themselves and their relationship with Christ, then the quiet gown is very meaningful. And let me tell you, this one wasn't there. <laughs> it's, an, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's a story I love giving. In our first year, yeah, I, I, I think only Paul has seen my wife. Who has seen my wife? Oh, you? Ah, yeah, yeah. My wife is Malisafi. <laughs> Malisafi kabisa. Eh, ni Malisafi, by the way. Tunatembea gana ya tao, tao ananza kuchokozwa. And I'm like, by the way, you're doing a nice thing. You still, you are affirming I saw Malisafi. So in our first year, she was uh, an auditor. So she was promoted in that year, senior auditor. So she's leading teams. And one May, she's sent to Kapenguria for three days. So she comes in the evening. She tells me, tomorrow morning, nimetuma Kapenguria. Um, nimetuma Kapenguria. And we are leaving at 4 a.m. in the morning. Please, Udani Sindikisha. I tell her, that's okay. That's okay. Nita Kusindikisha. So in the morning, she packs. I escort her to the stage to Nangoja Gari. Gari Kukuja. <laughs> Ikafika. Nikauliza. Nikafungua mlangu wa kaingia. Nikaangalia ndani. Yule yukondani ni driver peke ake. And I knew their driver. He was called Wasike. Wasike is from West Ani. I see Wasike. Na yuko peke yake. So I ask her, Kwani ya mkwa munaenda na mtu mingine? Can you hear now? This was only me going. 4 a.m. Na ni Wasike. Na munaenda kapenguria. Three days. <laughs> so they leave. I call at 2, 2 p.m. In the afternoon. Simu ni muteja. I call in the evening. Simu ni muteja. Wameenda kapenguria. Na wasike. I call the following day in the morning. Simu muteja. At one, I see. I tried calling you. What do you think? I, I asked her. What do you think I asked her? Or what do you think was going through my mind? Wasika kutoka mumias. Let me tell you. It did not disturb me at all. Yeah. It didn't. Why? Because of our relationship before marriage. Yeah. If she was okay with me before marriage how we related before marriage, even after marriage, why should I have doubts about her, her relationship with other men, even in my absence? <laughs> Look at this one. You are doubting. Why should I? We treat other people, we judge other people based on our own self, based on our experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Vila unaniangalia in a determine the way I judge your look is determined by my own thoughts of how I am looking at you. So if the way we related my wife and she was still an auditor, she was still Malisafi, why should I doubt her even now? Ata sasa kienda guild wiki muzima waenda Mombasa. I am okay. So please ask. So, <laughs> young men and women here. No wonder, nini muko hapa. And at one time you had two boyfriends. Eh? The current boyfriend you have. Do you think ukimwangalia hivi unaonanga kama yuko faithful? Unafikiria anga vile wewe ulikuwa unafanya? Hata yeye ndio anafanya nini? Yeah. 
Hey, Paul. So now we have only last question. Okay? You're going to miss your party. You're on the floor. Okay. okay, mine was Koyo Dawari. Kwa? Dawali. Yes. When uh, we had said it's a gift, a uh, probably that cannot be equated, what about to the places where you go and in Ahesabiwa you have to bring A, B, C, D? It is equated to a certain amount of money. Yeah, because you see, these are negotiations and culturally, there are certain things you have to give and you have to give a value. So it is calculated. Um, in other places, in other places, then has a biwa, mirongo. Sasa hapa kwa mirongo, mirongo is the amount of goods. Like for example, if your mother, if your mother was, the dowry was buri mirongo etato, that means 30 goats. Your sister, your father will ask for 30 goats. You, during your mother's time, probably they were valuing each goat at 5 shillings. Now, they probably will value it at 2,000 shillings. So the purpose of the value, mm -hmm. the attachment of value is for purposes of negotiation. It does not indicate the value of the girl. Yeah. One last one, please. Yeah, one last one. Uh, what about uh, probably when the, the younger girl wants to get married and yeah. probably the, the elder one, mm -hmm. Ajamarika Bado? Siyaoe, oh, I know culturally, mm -hmm. they will say the younger girl cannot bring dowry before the older girl and all other kind of because superstition yeah. culturally the older girl was married first but what about if she delays will we deny the younger girl common sense is who you are married to why you need a no um I think that has been answered. I wanted to ask about uh, those superstitions where um, if you are getting, if you're marrying and your elderly brother or brothers or sisters have not yet gone through the process, mm. uh, there are those demands that uh, mm. so you've answered it. Yeah. And then kuna that, kuna, there, there are those superstitions sama wogambao watu wanaekewa that if you don't do this and this and this and this, yeah. you know those two nonsense that mm. you are threatened with. Mm. In, 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 and, and some of us are really tumepoki one of those. So when you talk about that, unasikia na kristiano kando so that I is to those, you know, mm. to superstitions. Yeah, yeah you see, let, let's, <laughs> the other day, um, um, I was invited to be a panel in the NCCK men's conference and I heard something very interesting that in some parts of Kisiland if a young man dies an unmarried young man dies before they bury him they have to make sure that his penis is upright <laughs> no, that's, I, I was shocked I was actually speechless but before you call that demonic because Christians we are very quick at de, de, dismissing things as demonic <laughs> ah. you see in African culture things they could not understand or beyond or things beyond their comprehension they would always be made superstition or attributed to superstition so why the penis has to be upright yeah, following in the same direction as the legs is because if it is buried falling on either side he will bring a curse and there will be no children born in that homestead. 
So how do you pro pro protect? So how do you ensure that there are children in that homestead? But does that make sense? Does that make sense? No, it's simply superstition. So in African communities, to order the community and bring... When we were growing up, if you passed by a grave, you could not point it like that. Eh? You, what were you told? That the finger will bend like this. But will the finger bend? No. But why are we told that? Is because there is order in the community. So superstition in African traditions, in African communities, is to bring order. When you're told, when you're told, unajua kuna watu wengine, familia zingine ni boko haram. They steal girls and do never return. So to make sure that the young man brings dowry and their family brings dowry, what are they told? If you don't bring dowry, your children will die or be deformed. Yeah. yeah. Just like now, we know if you steal a motorbike, you go to the police, you can bribe your way out. Right? Na, lakini kama hiyo motorbike imeendewa kwa daktari wa kienyeji can you dare steal you can't superstition That's the purpose of superstition in African communities was to order but we now know better thank you Wow. so guys thank you so so much allow us to close it from here it has been a wonderful session we can keep on asking is Ohio Masoli mengine online um, maybe um before to Malizie, quick uh, announcements. Uh, tomorrow we continue with our fellowship. To the fellowship, we continue with um, the amazing acts. Tuko chapter? Chapter 9, thank you so, so much. Um, on Thursday, we continue with... Yes, lessons from the kings. That is ancient wisdom for modern youth. And then on Fridays, Kama Kawaida, movie, uh, entertainment team, Ikorada. On Saturday, sports, Kama Kawaida. On Sunday, we have a forthcoming activity, still from Ephesians 5.3, the issue of gender, the LGBTQ+, uh, and, and, and all that. We'll be having it here immediately after the youth service. So kindly to attend to that. And then on Monday... Uh, we continue with the Bereans. We'll be having uh, Reverend Doria uh, tackling the issue of the supremacy of scripture over culture. So uh, thank you so, so much, Kowali Ambao Alikona Tufuata Online. This is PCA Bahati Youth Fellowship, and uh, this is how we do it. So, um, Kumalizia, uh, I feel, I know time and I'm sorry, we... Verse 1 in stanza of um, 11. Yes, Yakwanza na chorus. I hope you will not be tempted to go to. Okay. Are we there? 11 Kami sina spore need we can wound it sick and so Jesus ready stands to save you full of pity love and power I will arise and go to Jesus he will embrace me in his arms in the arms of my dear Savior, oh, there are ten thousand chants. I will arise. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms. In the arms of my dear Savior, oh, there are ten thousand chants. So special thanks, Mchungaji, for honoring uh, this day. Um, we have our patron, Piana Afwata. Wana shukuru na Pia Elda Kaboshi. Ame Piana.
salamu. So, uh, and guys, thank you so, so much. We never tire. us. Now, I'll ask Calvin uh, to close us with a word of prayer. Lord, we are grateful uh, for your love and mercy and uh, for your care that you have taken good care of us uh, till now, from morning till now, from when we were born and uh, to here we are. We are grateful for gathering us here tonight and we are grateful for our mchungaji amid to funza mengi atunaomba baraka ikawe juu yake kutoka kwako. Tunaomba kuweza kuwa pamoja nasi uh, pia tunaporudi manyumbani mwetu na kila ambacho tumeweza kufunzwa leo we be able to cultivate it and put it into practice and we follow your rules and your ways uh, so that you may bless us and live to you you and worship you and follow you truly uh, for this we pray believing and trusting in Jesus name amen, amen. That, oh Lord, now as we part, bless us, and for having spent time in your house, may we be blessed, may some, the word you have proclaimed in Psalm 84, may we move from grace to grace. Therefore, Lord, we ask as we depart, bless us, and renew us in you, and renew the love you had for us, even for the, the at first. We may have fallen short of your glory many times, but your grace is new each and every morning. Therefore, Lord, love us again and teach us to live in your ways, we pray. And we pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you.